Hello everyone, welcome to Predator's Papers. This is the 16th discussion in this series. We have two titles, Comparison of the Olivet Discourse on 1 Corinthians 15 and Comparison of Matthew 24 and 1 Thessalonians 4-5. You can find this printable two-page comparison on our website, preterspapers.com. We're using Young's Literal Translation, YLT, for this fact sheet. When the interpretation of a passage is controversial, we use a literal translation so as not to have to deal with possible translator bias. Some people believe that the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, pertains to the coming of the Son of Man in A.D. 70, with which we agree but then believe that 1 Thessalonians 4-5 and 1 Corinthians 15 pertain to a future coming of Christ. This amounts to believing in a third coming for which we find no evidence, but let's take a look. These documents before us point out the parallels of the gospel narratives with Paul's writings, and it appears they are outlining the same event. There is an uncanny match. But perhaps this is just a coincidence. Maybe they are speaking of two widely separated events in time, that is, two different comings of the Lord, one past and one future. Where can we look to figure this out? On the 1 Corinthians 15 document, we look at number 7. It gives us the time frame. Paul was instructing his readers to understand that the parousia, or presence of the Lord he was referencing, was going to happen in the people's lifetime that he was addressing. He said, We indeed shall not all sleep. He let them know that some of his companion believers would be alive, just as Jesus declared that his generation would not pass away until all the end times events take place. Additionally, notice in item number one that both the Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians events are referenced as the parousia. We must keep in mind that Paul was writing under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, so this was not guesswork. We find the same thing in the Matthew 24 and 1 Thessalonians comparison On the second page, in item number four, Paul is referencing we who are living, being present at the coming of the Lord. He was fully expecting that some of the people he was writing to would be alive in the day of the Lord he was describing. So this is a match with the gospel account which requires the fulfillment of end time things in that first generation. Again, Paul was writing to these believers under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and this was not guesswork. We understand those who are looking around at the evil in the world and feel incredulous. The kingdom of God is present right now. They do not find a shred of concrete evidence, and we agree. We do not find external evidence because Jesus' kingdom is not of the three-dimensional world. We are called to live in the peace of the invisible kingdom while being present and active in the three-dimensional world. Paul said, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, Think about these things. He was describing our Heavenly Father and His loving, abiding presence with us right now. Paul, who suffered imprisonment, brutal beatings, and several stonings, said, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. These comparisons of the gospel and the writings of Paul will require some study, but do not believe us or anyone else. Rather, prove or disprove all things for yourself. We try to help using these verse fragments, but nothing is better than reading the passages in context. 
James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you in the next video. Shalom.